Wrestling fans, Scotty Bender here for WrestleVision, and we are here standing next to WWE diva Don Marie. Don Marie, you are in town today for Media Day, SmackDown coming to the Blue Cross Arena. Yeah, we're having a great time. We're here at Bennigan's downtown Rochester, and um, we're meeting some fans. We're promoting the show for Tuesday, our Thanksgiving show. And you know, that always means something's good, right? The Divas are always doing something crazy on the holiday shows. So make sure you look for the show on Thursday. Um, so we're having a great time. We're sitting here interviewing with you, all the good-looking men. I'm excited. I can't ask for anything more. I'm eating good food, good-looking guys. Get to hang out with Luther Reigns. I mean, I get paid for this. It's amazing. Luther Reigns, thank you for joining us here. Uh, talk a little bit about how you broke into wrestling. Uh I started in 1996 at the WCW Power Plant, uh, trained down there, was signed to a contract, spent a couple years there, uh, and just, you know, things kind of evolved from that point on. How was your experience in California with Rick Bassman under UPW? Uh, UPW was a really good experience for me. Um, that's, you know, when I came back to wrestling after uh, a couple years off, Rick was the first guy that I worked with, first promoter I worked with. Um, he was actually doing a lot on the West Coast, and that's where I lived. So it gave me an opportunity to uh, to get a lot of work out there. And uh, Rick and I are still really good friends to this day. One of your highlights going over to Iraq, I know you guys are going over there again. Talk about meeting with the uh, troops over in Iraq when you guys went over there. Um, when I went over to Iraq last year, it was a great experience. I, I can honestly say it changed my entire life. Um, when I came back home, it just makes you appreciate everything you have. I mean, even the little tiny things that you just take for granted. I know this past Tuesday, ECW released their Rise and Fall. Yeah. How kind of you know feelings does that stir up? I mean, you were a big part of the start of ECW. Now, yeah. you know, looking back on it, you know, thinking back with the release, you know, what are your feelings? I'm so excited that the WWE put out this DVD on the rise and fall of ECW because I don't think there's a better company out there that could have really done it justice. I started watching it um, the other day. I was home for just a few hours, and I started watching it, and um, it, it's amazing. The, the interviews, it just brought back so many memories. Um, I just get chills thinking about it. And, and the best way I could explain is that I grew up at ECW. It, it really made me realize that you can't expect people to be who and what you want. You know, just accept people for what they are. And a lot of other things. It made me grow up professionally, personally. Um, I met a lot of great friends there. And I, I'm happy I was there. And I'm also happy I'm here now. It, it just, I would not have been ready for my time here at WWE if I didn't have my time at ECW. Things, you know, talking about things dying, uh, Tori Wilson's father, I mean, you killed him with your sexual prowess. I have to bring that up. So hey, what was that like? I mean, talk, positioning me? I might be, but. <laughs> you have a will? I do. I do. Okay. Not as big as probably Mr. Wilson's, but um, I, I could know. keep, I don't know. You don't know. What was that like, though? I, it was a great story. I loved working with Tori's dad. He was such a great sport. There was nothing, nothing that we could have asked him to do that he would not have done. He was ready to go. Um, Got a little embarrassing sometimes when I had to look Tori in the face the next day after I just like made out with her father, um, married him in his underwear, and then killed him in bed. But um, we put some of those differences to the side, and we get along sometimes. Sometimes we don't. It's still that love-hate relationship between us, so you never know what's going to happen. OVW people know, you know, the minor league for the WWE, but t people really don't know how it works down there with your Jimmy Cornette, you know, molding the stars that you see today. Talk a little bit about OVW and, and work with Jim Cornette. Um, well, that's just what OVW is. It's WWE's minor league, and uh, Cornette is the mastermind behind uh, behind OVW, him and Danny Davis, and uh, those guys are just consummate professionals. You know, they're, they're the best at what they do, and uh, if you look at the talent pool that has come out of there and made the transition to SmackDown or Raw, you know, uh, all the guys that have come up are doing very, very well. On, on the two TV shows, and, you know, that's because of uh, the trainers down there, Bill DeMott, Lance Storm, and, and obviously Jim Cornette and Danny Davis. Now, you know, I do sell life insurance, so maybe, you know, when the cameras are down, we can talk, so okay. find out a little bit more. big policy on yourself? Uh, big policy. you got to marry me first, or I don't get it. I, I can do it. Speaking of marriage, <laughs> perfect, segue. perfect segue. You're engaged to Patrick Kenny, yeah. Simon Diamond of TNA. How has your relationship been with the competition between TNA and WD, especially heating up these days? Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of him. He's been doing such a great job over there. Um, I think it was real important for us to go to two different companies. When we were at ECW, that was great. We had a great experience. We were able to travel together, be together 24-7, and he's my best friend in the whole entire world. Uh, but I thought it was really important for both of our careers to be at two separate companies because what was happening was it was 
Dom Marie and Pat or Pat and Dom Marie and we became one entity. And that's really not very good when you're in this industry because you, you, you want to have your own little niche and it was starting to become just one between us. Um, so I'm glad that he went there and he's creating his own identity. I'm here creating my own identity and people are finally starting to not say Dom Marie and Pat or Pat and Dom Marie. It's one or the other. And I'm, I'm really proud of him. He's doing a great job over there. And uh, the company, you know, I hope it I hope it really succeeds. I think it's great for competition. I think it's great for so many of my friends um, that have been unemployed because there's just nowhere else to go. And we have some great, great talent out there that's just not hired or not employed um, and not able for the fans to see some f- phenomenal wrestling from these people that are not yet done in their careers. Um, I think I think it's a great foreground for them. Speaking about learning the ropes here in Rochester, we have a couple few independent federations, and I know they're all going to be watching. I mean, just recently breaking into the WWE, what kind of advice can you give to someone who's you know looking to start and try to get into the wrestling business and make it big? Lace your boots up tight. Lace them up tight, <laughs> and uh, you know have thick skin. Correct. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, this is a very, very tough business, you know, and uh, you just, you really got to want it just like anything else. Um, I mean, you got to be willing to go to any lengths, make any sacrifices, uh, just train hard, man. That's it. What can we expect from Don Marie in 2005? Well, you know, if you've been watching a product long enough, um, you know, you never know what to expect from me. And um, I like it that way. I like to keep you on your toes. You're quite mischievous. I like to call it adventurous. Okay, I just like to have a little fun. Nothing wrong. Girls like to have fun, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much. I'll see you there. You're going to be my date? Absolutely. All right. And that big life insurance policy. Okay.